Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Awesome Freeware Scenery for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. In this video I present 7 freeware scenery packages, the links will be in the video description below. First we are in Lisbon and this is the stock scenery for purposes of comparison. I'll always present the stock scenery first and then we will see what the new freeware scenery improves upon or at least what I can see visually. After all it's important to me that what we get out of the freeware scenery packages are things that are immediately apparent because otherwise I'll just never notice them in regular flight unless I'm specifically trying to target them. And you know these scenery packages are gonna ultimately amount to quite a lot. This particular package is 916 megabytes and it's only using 4k textures so I don't think we can compress it too much. But anyway this is the default scenery right now. We see a bridge that's sort of lackluster. We see a tower on the other side that seemed to be the tallest thing around. So I'm heading towards it. Otherwise, there wasn't a whole lot of buildings. Uh, this side that we were flying over before was Lisbon. Uh, this is across the strait, and uh, I forget the name of this particular area. But we fly by that building, and it's nothing particularly special. I make note of that because it turns out to be something special in the freeware scenery package. And there's a port area there, but there's just nothing very interesting around. I continue over back over to the Lisbon side. There is a cluster of buildings over there that we head towards and looking over at that, I mean there's nothing spectacular going on over here. It's all autogen buildings, autogen towers. It blends in very well but that's part of the problem actually. We want to see stuff that will stand out and not too much, I mean it should be realistic. But yeah, let's take a look at the package by Kamiba, C-A-M-I-B-A on Nexus Mods. And first of all, I immediately spot a very prominent bridge across uh, this strait or channel. And so that is that seemed to be an improvement. I didn't notice that before and I figure I would. I'm usually good at spotting bridges. Bridges are important to me. Uh, so this seems like a good bridge. Uh, actually, you can tell the freeware bridges, the add-on bridges, by the fact that the cars don't drive over them, they drive under them. Because <laughs> That's unfortunately a side effect right now. We'll see if we ever get a way to fix that. There's also this other building over here, this waterfront building, and actually a little complex over there too. Don't know exactly what they are, but they seem to be new. Definitely improvements. I figured that I would have spotted them on the previous pass otherwise. So yeah, that little bit is improved. And then as we look further along, you can sort of see another bridge over where we were in the previous segment with the default scenery, but there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's a cruise ship there that I didn't notice before. And uh, there are other buildings to the right that we will visit first. So let's take a look at those other buildings to the right. I think overall this... Oh, there's a little sort of castle thing there. I didn't see that before and I think that's new. Uh, judging from the color of the trees, that must be separate. And I don't know if that terminal uh, was there before either. Or if they were there, uh, they cer certainly weren't as noticeable as they are now. Uh, so we have this plaza here. We've got a little statue there. Those buildings are really interesting uh, to me, especially since they seem to have a sort of this side up arrow. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they all have a little arrow that sort of indicates which side's the top, but uh, they do seem to. Uh, so I will forever remember them now. There's a bridge over there too. Uh, actually, maybe an aqueduct? Maybe an aqueduct. So there are substantial improvements. Uh, for the one gig of scenery that we have here. So over, uh, overall this was very impressive. I thought it was well worth adding. And here's this bridge here that definitely was not here before. There's a container ship and a whole port area that I didn't think was as well developed before. So yeah, this looks like sort of the Golden Gate almost. And it provides a similar function actually between a big city and the land on the other side across the strait. So here, instead of that autogen tower, we have sort of a Christ the Redeemer statue. I'll, uh, I'll have to research which one came first, but uh, there's definitely that sort of statue there. 
and hanging the same turn to the left here. Along the port area we see a little bit more development including the one of those bigger cranes that uh, lift large containers or I don't know entire ships I don't know anyway so that was the scenery for Lisbon by Kamiba next up is Doha and this is the default scenery now again uh, the Doha scenery uh, was from msfsaddons.org and was two gigabytes by Riswali and Chris B. But anyway, this is the default scenery first. In the background, we see the sort of downtown area. I sort of scoped out the landscape for you to indicate that there are no other prominent buildings, and that's gonna change with the freeware scenery. So uh, there will be at least one really, really prominent building that is not part of the downtown area here. And taking a look at the downtown area, it's once again the Autogen buildings. They're more or less the correct size. I mean, they there are buildings where they indicate buildings here, so there's at least that going on. But otherwise, they're very lackluster beige. They're very beige. Now, this is the second flight now with the scenery, uh, the freeware scenery by Rusuali and Chris B. We see a tower over to the... Is that west? Anyway, over to the left from the downtown area. The downtown area you can see is much highly, much more highly developed, but I'm heading to this special tower here, which I believe is the tallest tower in Doha. And uh, it is, I think, the Aspire Tower or something like that. Anyway, it's part of this athletic complex, this sort of uh, Olympic complex. Some of the other buildings here are developed. You can see we've got good scenery for those, but there's also one that is fairly large that probably could do with some work. So hopefully that does get some love at some point. So there's the downtown area. Now the very prominent blue and white building up front, I've looked at Doha skylines and it's not there. And it's not on the list of really tall buildings in Doha. So I guess this is a planned building, but I would almost sort of rather not have it until we get more refined textures of it because the textures right now are a little bit plain. The other buildings all have very nice textures on them. They're much better looking. So I don't know about that one building. I have mixed feelings about that. Otherwise, this looks great. It's, it's because, I guess, uh, to some extent, it's because all these other buildings look wonderful uh, that I, I'm iffy about that one really tall building that doesn't quite fit in very well. So, yep, taking a look around. This is obviously good stuff. And I'm glad to have it. It looks looks spiffy and certainly a huge improvement over the default scenery of Doha which was uninspiring to say the least uh, we know that there's better stuff going on around here this one though yeah I'm you can sort of feel me in the plane eyeing it suspiciously can't you I mean <laughs> as I fly around it I'm looking at it, I'm staring at it going hmm I, that's why I ended up having to uh, look up, is this really a thing? Because I couldn't really believe that it's a thing. And I looked it up and I, I didn't see it being a thing. And honestly, the geometry is a little bit weird. Anyway, so sorry about that, 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 that. That's one criticism. But anyway, next up is Edinburgh. And this is by, uh, this is the default scenery. But the eventual scenery that I'll show is by Sir Leonard Four. And this is a one gigabyte scenery after you expand it. First of all, we take a look over that straight or channel and the, the bridges aren't, there's three bridges that are supposed to be there and they aren't really prominent. That'll change with the freeware scenery. And here, well, Edinburgh is sort of a laid back place, let's face it. I, I wasn't really expecting huge towers anyway. So the, the changes are gonna be a little bit more subtle. They're not going to be poking out. So I, I take a very close look. I stay at very low altitudes, as you can see, checking out the port area here. So try and remember what that looks like. And then after a while, we'll head towards what is more or less the city center. So just scoping out the area. You see some buildings over here. And turning. 
And so I think this is uh, the city center area that we're headed towards. We see a park that ought to have more stuff inside. I think that's the, uh, I think that's supposed to be where the castle is. And it's got some stuff going on there, but it's not really very convincing to any degree. There's a terminal here. That stays more or less the same, I think. Otherwise, there wasn't very much in the stock scenery. So here we are with the modded scenery, again by Sir Leonad, uh, L-E-I-N-A-D-4. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. And we have our three very prominent bridges. So same usual flaw with the add-on bridges, that cars don't drive on them. Though I think the one furthest to the right there is actually a railroad bridge. So, I haven't seen any trains. I thought there were supposed to be trains. There were trains in X-Plane 11. There ought to be trains. I haven't seen one, though. Anyway, uh, headed back the way we did last time. Uh, this is what the port area looks like now, and that's obviously a new building uh, with extra ships and everything. That definitely was not there before. So, that's one plus. And there's a little building here that I hadn't noticed before some sort of cathedral perhaps and proceeding on in the same direction we see other prominent things especially the castle <laughs> uh, there's a castle here I don't know about this sort of stadium thing that's interesting but I take a few loops of the castle that's obviously a very impressive looking sight now much better than it was before That's certainly worth adding in, and I doubt I'd miss it if I was flying into Edinburgh. I'd probably give that a flyby. Yeah, that's, I mean it's on a hill and everything. You can see it from a distance. There's this other building here. I'm not sure what it is, but that's obviously very well modeled. There's a stadium. Uh, this is, uh, gosh. Um, Further, further to the east, I want to say southeast of the castle, but my directions are all messed up. So there's a little stadium, a little stadium, that's a big stadium, big stadium there. And uh, some other estate there, I don't know if that was part of the original scenery, I doubt it. I think that must have been added in, because it'd be weird for them to have had that looking so good while they missed out on Edinburgh Castle. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know if that's Edinburgh Castle. It just ought to be Edinburgh Castle because it's like the biggest castle in Edinburgh. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe the biggest castle in Edinburgh is not Edinburgh Castle. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it now. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, names of things. Not, not my forte. And there's a weird building in the middle of that field. I don't know why. Anyway, so that was Edinburgh and uh, that was looking good. So those were the three city freeware scenery packages that offered many different buildings. Uh, the next three are all from uh, Thalixte, uh, T-H-A-L-I-X-T-E, and uh, they are a little bit more defined in their scope. The first is Saint Malo, and all three I believe are in France, they're all in France. And uh, this is what Saint Malo looks like by default. Okay, and so it's a walled city, and you sort of get a sense that it's supposed to be a walled city like this. It's not perfectly well defined by any means and this is on the north coast of France and yeah so we can see that that might need some touch up and so this is the version by Thalixti and it, uh, you can see it's very bright uh, uh, but of course that might also be the lighting we were in a darker sort of atmosphere on the previous pass but now we've got a much more defined walled city I would say that maybe it's a touch too blue, and uh, I think it, uh, from what I've seen, I could probably adjust the textures a little bit to my tastes anyway, so I don't think it's, uh, I think it's just one big texture, or at three LODs or something like that. It's not like I'd have to do every single building separately, so uh, I might just adjust it to my taste, but yeah, I just found it a little bit blue. But really well defined, obviously now it looks proper, 
and uh, it's about uh, 296 megabytes. So it's actually nice to be able to fly around a very complex model like this of a place and the frames seem to be pretty good. Of course I'm flying a fairly simple and slow plane, although it looks sporty. Uh, the VL3 I've been flying the entire time. It's a modded livery by the way uh, that's available. This Kira livery is available. I forget. I think it's both uh, Alexis Mods and NSFS addons.org. You can find it. Next up is another uh, walled city scenery by Talixti. And the first we're looking at it by default and it is to our left there. You can tell that the default scen scenery meant to make a walled city once again. And you can see the defined area of it very well. All right, you can see the wall where the walls ought to be. But it's just not quite managed it. Uh, it did pretty good with the towers, to be honest. It didn't do a very bad job with that. So, yeah, I mean, on the whole, I'd say the stock scenery is passable, especially in this case. It did a better job of this than San Malo. But then, if we take a look at uh, Thelixti's uh, version of it, a, a little bit darker here, but uh, that's probably from the shadows in this case. From the other direction, it's uh, brighter, you can see, like this. Uh, and this is 595 megabytes. So, uh, I should note that for San Malo, I flew out of LFRD, that's the airport, uh, and for uh, Carcassonne, which is what this is, I flew out of LFMK, so this is Carcassonne, C-A-R-C-A-S-S-O-N-E, and that's looking very spiffy, and uh, the colors are nice too, so this is very good, very, very medieval. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, another scenery by Thalixti is the viaduct at Milo, and I don't know how to pronounce that properly. Uh, so, um, you've probably seen images of this particular viaduct, it's very grand over, uh, high over a valley, but this is the default version. The default version is obviously not quite as grand. It's trying. You can see the default scenery tried to make a viaduct here, <laughs> and they tried to make a uh, uh, lifted highway. It just didn't quite lift it high enough and didn't add suspension obviously. So there, therein lies the problem here. And you can see the town of or city of Milo to the right there. Actually uh, on, I think on the photo scenery at the bottom you could see the towers of the viaduct. Anyway this is the modded scenery by the LXD now. Uh, so the same viaduct at 346 megabytes, so pretty hefty, 16k textures. So I might personally reduce the size of those because space. Eventually, if I keep downloading these, space is going to be a problem. The world is big, and uh, I flew out of LFCM to fly here. So that is a very nice version of the viaduct. Obviously, uh, you would clearly recognize it now if you didn't before and this is on this side yeah yep a marvelous version of this particular bridge so yeah that's a good addition and the Lixty gets the the sort of MVP of this particular video for these three sceneries I think but there is one more scenery that I have for you in this video, and that is of Yosemite Valley by VFX Simmer. And here I was flying out of XMPI. This is a 1.82 gigabyte scenery. This is the default scenery right now, though. So this is what the Yosemite Valley looks like by default, approaching from the west, flying east. You can see the rocks. I mean, you can you can tell what the formations ought to be. You can tell El Capitan behind us there, uh, to the right, and some of the other rock formations. It's not it's not horrendous. Uh, the mesh is reasonably good, but the slopes are always a problem for flight sims. You know, they they tend to produce those stretched textures. They're very problematic. Uh, taking a look at Half Dome, uh, the Yosemite Village is below us and we see Half Dome in front of us. 
you can see the stretch textures again. It's sort of streaky. So not quite the best thing. Again, it's some, something in general with flight sims that you get. There's the back side of uh, Half Dome, and you can see again streaky textures. I mean, to some extent, it would be streaky. But anyway, we can see why there might be room for improvement here. And here then is VFX Simmer's improvement upon it, uh, roughly two gigabytes, 1.82 gigabytes. And yeah, you can definitely tell the difference right away. Now, there, there are some downsides. and uh, There's a little bit of a weird patch to the right there. I eventually take a closer look at it. You can see me pointing it out there. And uh, some of the mesh, it's, it's sort of, uh, if you take a closer look at it, you can see the vertices, if you will. So, uh, yeah, you can, it, it's good sort of at a distance. Now, I didn't check how it looked like in the cockpit. In the cockpit, because the field of view is narrower, you tend to see those details a little bit more than in the exterior viewers view. So, but it's so hard in this case. Uh, I mean, the, the rocks look so good like this. That's certainly so much better than the default scenery that, you know, I, I, I don't want uh, even heftier scenery package, you know, like, uh, go 20 gigabytes or something in order to smooth out the, the vertices or something. But, yeah, I mean, at some point you gotta say, well, this is probably just good enough. Uh, I'll take it. I'm not gonna spend all of my flights flying through Yosemite Valley. And if I can get looking like this, I'm happy. So, yep, there's always a little bit of a trade-off. After all, I don't have Microsoft's servers here. <laughs> I can't host that much, that much detail. So I think I'll take this compromise. And of course, it looks beautiful. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't look beautiful. But anyway, there's Half Dome. And you can see the difference, of course, because there's such a detailed mesh that uh, the textures don't, and of course the textures are improved themselves. It doesn't look quite as awkward and streaky as it did in the default scenery. Anyway, so that is awesome freeware scenery number two, and this is my opportunity to thank all of the modders for their work, which is really, really wonderful. And I hope other people enjoy the scenery. Now you have a good look at what you're getting from all of these packages. And yep, that is quite a face for Half Dome now. Much more detailed. Anyway, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.